guys and welcome to this gouache painting tutorial. My name is Anna and today we'll walk through this spring forest painting together step by step. I'm trying to take things a little bit slower in this tutorial, so if you want you can get your own paints and brushes and paint together with me. And even if this forest scenery looks complicated to you now, I promise it's not as difficult as it looks. We're gonna use very simple techniques and only a few colors, so I think this is a perfect painting for any levels to try out. I'm using my watercolor sketchbook today, but you can really use any watercolor paper for this purpose. I'm actually using the back side of this fancy paper today, so I hope that shows you that the paper quality doesn't really matter. That's one amazing point about gouache paints, they'll work on almost any paper you have. But yeah, then let's just jump right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is to add a very quick and light pencil sketch. I'm not even trying to draw every detail here. You can of course do that if you think it will make everything easier for you. But today I mainly use the pencil sketch just to figure out the measurements in the picture. So you can use any size or shape you would want for this picture. And then I'm dividing that area pretty much in half. So the top part will be covered by the tree trunks. And on the bottom half, we'll paint the forest floor with some flowers. But that's pretty much as far as I'm going with the pencil sketch today. You can see I have barely anything on this paper. And now we are ready to jump to the actual painting part. I'm gonna use this cup gouache collection today and then this separate palette to mix all the colors. Then I'm mainly gonna use two different sizes of watercolor brushes, but if you happen to have one bigger brush as well, it will speed up applying the first layers. You definitely don't need to own the exact same colors I'm using, but you'll basically need some kind of dark brown, then a forest green, some light yellow and white. I also added a bit of pink to the final flowers, so having a small amount of red paint will work for that. So now we'll start to work with the upper half of the painting first. So I first laid down this very light yellowish color to this sky. I mixed a lot of white in it so it will look very light in the finished painting. And in this point, especially with this sky part, you really don't need to be too careful. Almost all of this will be covered or blended to the background. So even if you feel like your first layers look like absolute garbage, it doesn't really matter. Mine looked pretty bad too with all these streaks and blotches. But just remember that every beautiful painting out there started with some weird crazy look in background layers. Okay, but anyway, so when we we're about halfway through the sky, I started to darken my colors slightly. So this light green will create the appearance of some leaves in the distance once we have all the details added on top. You can add a little bit variation in the colors here too. I try to keep the center and top part the lightest, so it will look like the light is kind of shining the brightest on those areas. And then when we're getting closer to the crown part, there will be some more leaves and shadows as well. We'll work on this part later as well, so don't worry if it doesn't look that great in this point. But now that we have these first layers here in the sky, we can start working with the crown part while we are letting that whole area dry. So here I mixed some forest green on my bigger brush and then just started to slather it on to the whole bottom half. Again, we we'll want to add the most darkness to the edges and leave the center here a little bit lighter and brighter. I also added a little bit more intensity right at the top of this crown part, so in the end it will look like the trees are creating a bit more shadows over there too. Mm -hmm. 
The crown here doesn't need to be very even by any means, but I think working with horizontal strokes rather than vertical ones will create a little bit more natural look. And then when you feel like you have good enough background for the forest, we can jump back to the sky part while we are letting all of this dry. So now it's time to start adding a little bit more detail. So we're gonna add a little bit more leaves and darkness with these same dapping motions again. As I said earlier, I'm mainly focusing these details to the lower half of the sky part and especially closer to the crown in this point. And then it's time to start adding the tree trunks. For this, you'll need a very dark brown. I think even a black would work, but I think having a bit of that brownish tone in there will make the end result a bit softer. So I'm just loading my brush with the brown paint and starting to create these stripes on top of everything we just created. Don't worry about some shaky lines, it's actually better to have some shakiness here and there because no tree is completely straight and smooth out there. Also try to change the thickness and distance between the trees a little bit and then I personally try to make them slightly thicker towards the bottom. I noticed that adding some thicker trunks to the edges of the painting will frame the whole picture nicely, so I chose to do that on both sides here. But otherwise, I would say try not to make anything too symmetrical. I think having some of that variation will make everything look much more natural. Then after a while, I started to add these much thinner branches here and there as well with my teeny tiny brush. I think a very thin brush like this is definitely worth owning. They're always the cheapest as well and I find myself using one in pretty much every painting I'm doing. But yeah, I thought these small branches definitely started to make this picture come to life and it just somehow adds that natural appearance to the forest. I think also in this point, you'll start to notice that those first layers we applied are definitely blending to the background. I finished this top part with some brighter green leaves here and there, again using the thin brush to make everything super small. But now we are pretty much done with the whole top part of this painting and we can move on to finish the lower half. So I continued where we left here by adding some color variation. I wanted the middle part in my picture to have this very bright area here, which will create the look of the sun catching this part of the crown. So to achieve that, I mix a lot of yellow to my greens here, so the color will be very bright compared to the other colors in the crown. But after that, you can just start to add some different tones of green here and there. I mix some darker green by adding some brown in there as well. And again, focus this mainly around the center part, so towards the edges and also the lower part of the painting. You'll want to add some darker stripes to the center as well though, so that it doesn't look too unrealistic. Even if we want some of those brighter areas, there are still shadows around those too.
Whenever you want your gouache paints to appear very opaque, you just want to use more paint and a little bit less water. I think this is definitely the magic of gouache paints because they are so versatile. This is one of the reasons why they've quickly become one of my favorite mediums because I always feel like painting with them is so fun and carefree. Like if you mess up something, you can just easily cover it up and no one will know. <laughs> However, whenever you want to paint on top of your previous layers, you do need to let those completely dry, otherwise you might experience the paint lifting and creating some bold spots. And this is what makes gouache different from acrylic paints that dry a lot faster. I use some clips in the corners of my pages to keep the paper straight. You could also tape them together with some painter's tape or washi tape if you're experiencing more bending in this point. But for me, this seemed to work just fine. And then, of course, as the last step, we'll add some light flowers all across the crown we've been working on. You'll want your light colors to be very thick, so only use as little water as you can to keep the color super bright and vibrant. And I kind of tried to create these groups of flowers here and there, and then leave some spots a little bit more plain, just to create that natural variation again. Then the closer I got to the bottom of the painting, the larger I made these flowers, so it looks like they are a little bit closer to us in the picture. You could of course decide to go with some other colors here as well, like some bright yellow or even light blue flowers would definitely look very pretty in this painting, but I chose to only go with these pink and white flowers this time to keep everything very simple. But then that's it for our spring forest painting. I think this took me around two hours in real time, though filming always makes the process a little bit slower for me. And I also promised to bring these extra painting and drawing videos back on a monthly basis. I know I kind of fell out of them, but these are definitely something I'll now focus more moving forward. So if you will try this one out, I'd also love to hear how it went for you. Was it easier than you thought or did you struggle with something? Things and feedback like that always helps me to explain things to you better in the future as well, so I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching and please consider subscribing if it was your first time here. I hope all of you are having an amazing day or night wherever you are and see you in my next one. Bye bye!